Hey this is David thank you for watching videos. The Note Edge is the new thing, with a fancy, curved rim where the display wraps around the edge of the phone, giving it its name. The rim can act as a totally separate secondary display, or as a complementary one to the main screen, a peculiar new addition. On the other hand, you have the much more traditional looking Galaxy Note 3. Samsung stepped up to a 1080p display with the Note 3 last year, and it has also equipped it with a capable Snapdragon 800 chip, and a potent camera. Design The Note Edge's curved rim makes for a truly alien appearance of the handset, but save for that addition, the Note Edge is very similar to the Galaxy Note 4. Yes, this means that it features a similar, sturdy aluminum frame, an important advantage over the all-plastic Galaxy Note 3. The back cover of both, however, remains plastic, the Note Edge comes with a more rough, leather-like texture, while the Note 3's full leather casing comes with a finer grain and a seam-like border. In terms of buttons, the Note Edge with its right edge occupied by the wraparound screen, is forced to move the lock button to the top, which is definitely a hard to reach, inconvenient position for such an often used button. The Note 3, in comparison, has its power slash lock key conveniently on the right. The volume rocker is on the left on both, and up front each has a large physical home key, but the one on the Note Edge comes with a fingerprint scanner. Display the Samsung Galaxy Note Edge comes with a 5.6-inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1440 x 2560 pixels, Quad HD, with an additional 160 pixel wide section for the edge. This is a step up from the 1080 x 1920 pixel display on the Note 3, as pixel density comes in at 525 ppi versus 386 ppi on the Note 3. In reality, both appear very sharp, but when you look at tiny text from up close you may see a slightly sharper picture on the Note Edge. The Note Edge display has also been improved in terms of peak brightness, as it scores a very respectable 496 nits, while the Note 3 is noticeably dimmer at 360 nits. Since both do a similarly good job with screen reflections, the Note Edge is the one that is easier to read outdoors. At night, you can also reduce screen brightness all the way down to one nit on the Note Edge, so that the screen does not tire your eyes with excessive glow, while the Note 3 can go to a still very good, but not on PAR 4.6 nits. Interface and Functionality the Galaxy Note Edge and Note 3 both run on Android 4.4 KitKat with Samsung's TouchWiz custom user interface on top. We've seen TouchWiz evolve to a brighter, less cluttered version in the Note 4, and in the Note Edge the same idea perseveres, but the interface is further transformed, subordinated to the secondary edge screen. All controls for Samsung first-party apps have been moved to the rim on the Note Edge, Playing and pausing music for instance happens here, and the change is as profound as to have the static row of icons in the home screen removed from the main screen. It makes sense, after all, you have a panel with even more 7, to be exact shortcuts on the curved rim. Then, the rim is also used as a ticker display for all sorts of notifications. The Note 3, on the other hand, features an older version of TouchWiz that is similar in terms of functionality, but comes with darker visuals, a more cartoony style and lesser choice of wallpapers. Basic functionality is well covered on both. The two have a built-in keyboard with a fifth row for the numbers, and while buttons are a bit on the small side, they are nicely spaced making for a fast and convenient typing experience. Processor and Memory the Galaxy Note Edge comes with the latest and most powerful Qualcomm SoC, the Snapdragon 805. There is also an Exynos 5433 octa-core version for select markets, while last year's Note 3 features the Snapdragon 800. Both are 32-bit, 
quad-core chips, that do a fine job handling Android mostly smoothly in daily use, but the slight, ever-present TouchWiz lag is still noticeable. If we had to dig in more detail, though, you can notice a difference in speed in favor of the Galaxy Note 4. Looking at pure specifications, the Snapdragon 805 sports 4 Krite 450 CPU cores clocked at up to 2.7 GHz, while the 800s 4 cores are of the older, Krite 400 generation, clocked at up to 2.3 GHz. Both chips are built on a 2.8 nmhpm process, and both also come with 3 GB of RAM. In terms of connectivity, you have 4G LTE on both devices, with theoretical peaks of up to 300 Mbps for downloads on the Note Edge, Category 6, and 150 Mbps on the Note 3, Category 4. Other connectivity options include Bluetooth 4.1 on the Note 4 versus 4.0 on the Note 3, dual channel Wi Fi on both, GPS, and NFC. Both devices also have an infrared beamer with a companion app that you can use to remotely control electronics like your TV or AC. Camera The Samsung Galaxy Note Edge comes with a 16-megapixel rear camera that supports optical image stabilization OIS, while the Note 3 sports a 13-megapixel main camera that lacks OIS. We don't know the exact sensor used in the Galaxy Note Edge, but judging from its sheer bulk, it is larger than the one on the Note 3. In the third gen Fabolt, Samsung is using a 1-3.06 Sony IMX135 with a 1.12 micron pixel pitch. Both come with 31mm lens with an aperture of f2.2. Indoors, the Note Edge has a wider lead, as it still manages to capture color accurately and detail remains fairly sharp with little noise. The Note 3, on the other hand, does not do SE well in low-lit conditions, and it also introduces a blue cast to pictures when using the LED flash, while the Note Edge manages to preserve fairly accurate colors even with the flash on. The Note Edge also moves to a 3.7 megapixel front camera, up from a 2 megapixel selfie shooter on the Note 3, and it does indeed capture more detailed and pleasing selfies. In terms of video, both the Note Edge and Note 3 can recording 4K at 30 frames per second FPS, or 1080p at either 60 FPS or 30 FPS. 4K looks remarkably good, with nice, rich colors, plentiful detail and with a high, nearly 50 Mbps bitrate. In 4K recording, it also makes a lot more sense to use the digital zoom option you have up to 8x times zoom while retaining a lot more detail than when you zoom in 1080p. 4K does have its small quirks, though, you can still record only 5 minute long clips at most, and you have to keep in mind that those recordings turn out very large in size. Battery The Note Edge despite its more demanding Quad HD screen and slightly smaller battery, lasts longer than the Note 3. The large size of Fabolts like the Galaxy Note Edge and Note 3 allows phone makers to bundle them in with gigantic batteries, the Note Edge has a 3000 mAh cell, slightly smaller than the 3200 mAh battery of the Note 3. Still, with clever optimizations and a more power-efficient silicon, even with the higher res quad HD screen, the Note Edge manages to squeeze more out of that battery than the Note 3 does with its larger juicer. The Note Edge scored a respectable 7 hours and 8 minutes on our battery life test where we run a simulation of typical use on devices with the display pre-calibrated to 200 nits. The result we get represents non-stop use, with no screen off time. The Note 3, in comparison, ranks in at 6 hours and 8 minutes. The Galaxy Note Edge is a lot about showing off the amazing capabilities of Samsung's AMOLED displays, and how they curve and bend. It's a show-off feature, and as such, it is granted to get you a lot of looks and attention, 
but it does little in terms of meaningful functional improvements. Still, overall, the Note Edge is a considerable upgrade over the Note 3, it comes with a sharper, quad HD screen, and while your eyes might not be able to tell much of the difference in terms of sharpness, they would appreciate the improved color accuracy. The OIS camera is also a nice step up on the Note Edge, as it captures some of the best shots we've seen from a smartphone and does so consistently, while the Note 3 is a bit less capable. Performance-wise, the Note Edge has the faster chips, but the performance boost is very slight and most of the gains are offset by the higher rest display.